clown all the years growing up. I think I'm just very weird. I wanted to be the one that got the last. I want to be funny, that's why I'm here. Just you talking into a microphone and people are laughing. I want to be a really good stand-up comic. And I got a standing ovation the first time I ever touched the stage. That's the best feeling in the world. I want to do so much. It's the best city for comedy. There's comedy everywhere. Chicago is a comedy city. That's what Chicago is. Second city, I.O. It's a great scene because people aren't doing it for the industry. They're doing it because they want to do it. That's why I wanted to move to Chicago, is because I could build. I could really build myself here. And I could create and I can explore. And I wouldn't have to worry so much about failing. People have called it the Harvard of comedy. All the best comics, they're all from Chicago. Tina Fey, Stephen Colbert, Steve Carell, the list goes on and on. And it's also made this giant influx of people because they want to be famous. My name is Jessica Joy and I am what you would probably call a sketch comedian. I grew up in a small town, uh, Olmstead Falls, Ohio, which is close to Cleveland, so I always say Cleveland because no one's ever heard of Olmstead Falls, but you have now. In high school, I was voted class clown, and that is an actual official title. You get a sash, you get some funds from the government, you know, they can live off for the rest of your life. In 2002, I got diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I guess that was probably a time, a time when I used humor to get through things, much to my parents and my sisters chagrin. I remember one time my parents said, okay, well, someone has to unload the dishwasher. And I said, well, I, I have cancer. And uh, I thought it was really funny, but nobody else did. <laughs> my sister still unloaded the dishwasher though. So. One of the perks of not having a thyroid is that I can't really gain weight. <laughs> I eat like a bitch. <laughs> in 2005, I moved to Chicago and I auditioned for the Second City Conservatory. I just enjoy laughing and making other people laugh. I think I'll be okay in 10 years. I don't, I mean, I don't think I'll be famous, but I'll, I'll be happy. Hopefully married to a creepy doctor I met on Facebook. La la. I love to sing and so to be able to make jokes while singing is like a double double satisfaction for me. And if the herpes virus really affects one in four people, does that mean that 50 people here have herpes? <laughs> and why did I work out so hard to get a body like Britney Spears when I just could have waited for hers to get all shitty? Uh, being an actor, you have to have what they call a day job, and I've had Quite a few. I've done the waitressing thing. I've done a lot of Marilyn Monroe singing telegrams. I was Cinderella for someone's party. Working at Cedar Point Amusement Park in Ohio. I worked at Chuck E. Cheese for many years. I was Chuck E. Cheese. And, um... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm probably one of the few people that doesn't dream of doing Saturday Night Live. It's not something that I, you know, dreamed of as a young girl. It's like a three to five minute audition okay. where you do a handful of original characters and a handful of impressions. Okay. Oh, oh, also Jessica, uh, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, we're, we're trying to keep it kind of quiet. We're not really bringing that many people out. And I think you're the only person actually from Chicago coming in this time. After I just said, I don't want to be on SNL. Is this a setup? <laughs> yeah, is this a setup? You have to have intense characters. Hey pal, hey pal, looks like we got a crowd out there that wants to hear some jokes. Good thing we got some great ones. Hey, speak for yourself. I can't. <laughs> I hope that someone at the airport is at least slightly suspicious that I have a ventriloquist dummy in my carry-on. I also found out more scoop about the actual audition and there were only five girls and 
rumor is they're looking for two girls. So that'll make it even worse if I don't get it. Like, wow, there were two spots and I didn't get it. A lot of people become famous uh, from working at Second City, but not everybody. Um, so people need to know that because I may be one of those people that doesn't become famous. My name is Kelly Howard. I am a female comedian from Chicago, Illinois. I realized that I was gonna be a comedian when I was working at Foot Locker and this agent guy was in there shopping for some shoes and it was some Hispanics in there. And I asked them, did they need help with anything? And it was like, oh no, me no speak no ingles, me no speak no ingles. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, whatever. And then they walked out right in front of the store and was like, hey Jose, bring me a burger too. And I'm like, they speak English, you know? So I talked about them for like 20 minutes after they left because I was so insulted. And the guy was like, have you ever tried stand up? The first time I ever performed on stage, I got a standing ovation and I knew right then and there. When they stood up for me at the end, like just the blood, just pulsating through my heart, through my fingers. I was like, this is it. I was a class clown. I got kicked out of two high schools. I was a mess. I was kind of like a bad kid going wrong and I found a way to make it right. Engaged. Give me a round of applause. Yes. Oh. That is amazing for me. That is amazing. I don't know if you've ever been to Harvey, Illinois, but that's where I'm from. So technically, I'm supposed to be a crackhead. You know what I mean? I made it out. I am excited. I was like, I told you, Daddy, somebody was gonna love me. Comedy is pain, but it's truth in pain, which makes us laugh about it. My mom was a drug addict for the first 12 years of my life, so I lived with my grandmother. And I grew up in a bad neighborhood, Harvey, Illinois, so I couldn't really leave out of my front yard because of the shooting and the robberies and stuff like that. We had a house full of people, like aunts, uncle, cousins, and then my cousins had kids, so their kids, and then their baby mamas and their baby daddies. Then we had two dogs, Zach and Zero, and then of course the roaches and the rats. So it was like a gang of us in this house, it was ridiculous. But I would make everybody like gather in the living room and I would dress all up in everybody else's clothes, you know, they're standing there watching me like, are those my shoes? The stage was always my way of just dealing with everything that came at me. Just recently I lost a 15 month old daughter. Heaven Elise, she passed away February 22nd. They said that the umbilical cord was kind of tiny, so she wasn't getting the proper nutrition. And then just things just continue to roll out, like from, oh, she has a small hole in her heart to, oh, she has multiple holes in her heart and it looks like Swiss cheese. She spent the first 10 months of her life in the hospital. So I was there with her, staying at the Ronald McDonald house and going back and forth to the hospital every day. I pretty much stayed there like six days a week. And then I came home and performed. I'm just, get on stage on Saturday and I'm just gonna release all of this. And I'm gonna go back with her with this fight because I had to have that fight or she wouldn't have had that fight. I was pregnant and I was having one of those days and I told my oldest daughter, I was like, Faith, I need you to go to your room. My emotions is in a disarray. And she's like, oh, oh my God. That's what we should name the baby, a disarray. <laughs> Comedy. Comedy was there, you know what I mean? It was it was there for me, it was, it was my, it was my way. This is what I like to do. I like to be able to say what's on my mind and then justify it with, I'm a comedian. <laughs> from Colorado, hated school, just wanted to be out, just didn't know how. I had a dad that went to prison when I was young and a mom that had to work really hard to support me and my sister. You know, for me it was definitely growing up and trying to make people laugh because there was a lot of sadness and there was a lot of crying and the only thing that I could think that would stop someone from crying was to make them laugh. Not a whole lot of great memories, but perfect for comedy. <laughs> I moved to Chicago about five years ago. Started doing stand-up comedy a little over a year and a half ago. People say sex is like pizza. Even when it's bad, it's still pretty good. <laughs> I've never had Little Caesars. <laughs> I am not making a living just on comedy, that's for sure. I am a dog groomer during the day. Luckily enough, I only have to do it a couple days a week because people can be very weird about their dogs being their babies and they have strollers for some of them. 
I don't have health insurance, but a lot of the dogs do. Because I work in a very wealthy neighborhood, I, I do have a lot of customers who come in and they won't say but about their dog. They call it the pants area or their fanny, but they refuse to say but. And not because they're in front of children or anything, just because they won't say it. And I always just want to say saying but isn't going to make you lose your wealth. That's not how wealth works. Um, maybe it is. Maybe that's why I'm grooming. I don't know. Yeah! I love my dog, but she's not my baby. She didn't come out of me. And I know that, because I'm a human adult. Good boy, Charlie. This month is actually the first month where I'm doing better than I ever have. I just actually finished my first week at Zany's and it was amazing and I just got my first paycheck from it and I was super stoked. I still haven't even cashed it because I keep looking at it. I used to live right on the border of Lincoln Park and Lakeview. For those of you unfamiliar with the neighborhoods, I like to call it the corner of trust fund and date rape. <laughs> I'm just right now trying to be as good of a stand-up as I can be and just making a living doing it. I don't want to have to wait tables or dogs or anything like that. As, as grateful as I am for being able to do those things, it's just, it's not, it's not what I want. I want to make people laugh. <laughs> Thanks you guys very much. You guys I'm Natalie Jose, and I'm a stand-up comic in Chicago. I grew up in the most pristine suburb of Pittsburgh. This was old money. This was mansions private tennis courts, elevators, you know, in your house. I moved to a suburb of Chicago called Naperville when I was 11. That move was really difficult. It was just rougher. I mean, it was rougher kids. It was, you know, the 90s. Girls were outlining their lips. Body suits were in. I felt right away, like you've got to kind of make a name for yourself. So I was very class clown. I think I've always thought I was funny. I've always been an entertainer. I feel like I started really late. I kind of feel like I screwed around in my 20s. I went to college, I stayed two extra years in my college town after I graduated. Bartending, I lived in this evil dead cabin out in the Appalachian Mountains with my boyfriend. I had a pet snake, a wood-burning stove. I mean, it was so bizarre. And so then when I moved to Chicago, I started doing stand-up and I loved it immediately. I'm not sure that I believe in monogamy. I do believe in jealousy, though. <laughs> I am very much a feminist. I feel like my comedy is dark because it's just about being 30 and living in a city and, and how like life can be lonely and how, as a woman, I feel like you have these two paths that you either take a career path or you take the family path. Like, I guess I never thought about getting married and having kids, I kind of just assumed it would happen. And now that I'm 30, and being a woman, I have 10 years to meet someone, marry someone, potentially, and have children, which is crazy. I'm single. So you start to feel like, well, maybe that's not gonna happen. I talk a lot about work. I'm a legal secretary. It's so bleak. It's kind of a mindless job. It's still exhausting, though. It's still exhausting to sit in a chair in a boring environment, and you have to wonder, like, why does this have to be so shitty? Why can't we have some colors in here? I do go out late, and I stay out pretty late. I try to, like, be reasonable, but every morning for me is a disaster. I mean, every single morning, that's when I'm depressed, like laying in bed thinking, I have to get up and go to this job. And every single morning, it's just like, you wake up! You get out of bed, you piece of shit! You know, this is what I'm yelling at myself. Get in the shower! And I never get in the shower. You know, I was just had a, this article in the Tribune, so I sent it to my parents. My parents have not seen my stand-up. My mom, when I told her that I was starting to do stand-up, was like, oh, this is just, you know, you're just gonna fall down this road of alcoholism and drug abuse and depression. And she just had this, really actually strong reaction to it um, and she's not wrong there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of alcoholism and drug abuse in, in the stand-up comedy world women in comedy I wish that I could say that it didn't matter no we're all treated equally but definitely the scene is dominated by men like there's shows that 
I might not get to do, or it's gonna be a while before I get to do them. Shows that feel exclusive or inclusive, or that barely ever have women on them. There are shows where months will go by without a woman on it. I guess I like breaking that mold a little bit. It's more of a challenge. I had this revelation the other day that if I were to talk to 14-year-old Natalie, I'm Natalie, um, and I would say, when you're 30, you're gonna sing in bands and do stand-up and live in the city. I'd be like, you sound awesome. You don't realize that these things are within your reach even. You just don't even realize it. And then you start doing it and you think, why did I wait so long? My name is Ever Marie Mayer. I'm originally from a town called Little River Academy, Texas. It's like a farming community, like FHA, FFA is really big there. I went to a community college called Temple College, and there was one comedy club around called Club Image, Club Image Comedy, and. I started doing stand-up there, and I was one of the only females. I had no business being in that club. I was underage. Um, I, I had, I had no jokes. Looking back, like I was telling dick jokes, which is ironic now because I'm a lesbian. But, <laughs> and I knew like I wanted to do characters and like just be a clown for people. I researched like my favorite like SNL characters like Molly Shannon, Will Ferrell, Sherry O'Terry, and most of them went to Second City and that's why I moved to Chicago. It's a huge, huge support group. Like I met some of my closest friends here doing stand-up. I'm not afraid anymore to tackle like things that most people won't. I know like I've lost weight when black guys stop hitting on me and white guys start hitting on me. Like that. <laughs> Like, I'm not at that point where I'm like rolling in the dough. I work at a Starbucks. Um, and some, can I say Starbucks? I work at a Starbucks. It's kind of like a slap in the face. Going and like killing it at a show and like being like Ever Maynard, the comedian, and then like Ever Maynard, the breezed up. At Starbucks, like, I don't have a name, which sucks. I can't be like, get off your cell phone and tell me what you ordered, because I don't know what you ordered. I hate it. A man got stabbed by his girlfriend over crack. Like, I can't tell you like how many times I've had to be like, please put your dick away at my Starbucks. I hate my day job. They get hammered in our tiny bathrooms. It's disgusting. Customers are like, what's going on? Why is there a man bleeding? And what, what do you want me to tell you? Like, he got stabbed. I come from a family that we're just dirt poor. My mom has really bad health. Like, she had cyst in her ovaries and they exploded, but because we didn't have health insurance, she couldn't afford it. And if it wasn't for my family, like pitching in to give her a hysterectomy, she would have died. And even now she's not healthy. As a country, we're focused on what I want to do, be a celebrity, but like not the things going on in their environment. And I want to be like, no, look, this is what's going on in America. This is what's going on in your hometown. We need to remove the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> the seriousness with the comedic relief. <laughs> so I want to be funny, but I also want to bring awareness. And they may not like it, they may not agree with it, but at least they can sort of relate to it in a way that they are gonna be like, well, I don't like that you're gay, but I got your story about how like you couldn't get a pap smear, you know? If, if I'm not successful in a way that I'm making mega millions, there's so much more you can do in comedy, but I don't think I'll ever stop. I want to be a household name. Kelly Howard, oh, that's that comedian girl. You know, I want your grandma to know who I am. You know, she may not necessarily approve of me, but I want her to know who I am. People really form meaningful friendships here in Chicago doing comedy. I want to do a good job and I take every show seriously. I want to make people laugh however I can for a living. I just want to, you know, get better, get better and better and better. You never know what's going to happen and you have no control over it, but it's good because you also don't know what's going to happen 
tomorrow. I can't give it up. I'm Kelly Howard, and I'm funny, and I'm energetic, and I'm cute. What you see is what you get. I'm crazy, and if you can't handle it, then you don't need to be my friend. That's what they say on reality shows, right? We got your boom, bam. I can swing it, I can dance.